What is up, everybody? My name is Justin. This is Forever Self Employed. In today's video, I'm joined with Tim, and we are going to talk about how everything is affecting our business. Tim, I don't think that we even need to go over the words that can be not used in this video, right? Yeah. Oh, look at that. I get a call right when you ask me a question. Um, yeah, the whole Modelo thing going around. Um, wow, that... dude. Really? We talked about this before we went live. <laughs> what Modelo? <laughs> I know. I'm just kidding, dude. <laughs> So how's everything affecting your business, Tom? Uh, um, to be honest, not that bad, not that much. Um, I'm still getting calls for paint, which is crazy. I got one just today. Um, I released a painting video and I did a small version and uploaded it to Facebook. Right. And like literally immediately got a call. No so, way, dude. Are you serious? Yeah. Dude. yeah. So, but you know, see it's how, basically, it's like a thing. Where they call work, like, oh, we, don't, we don't, what'd you say? Sorry. I said, see how good my methods work. Yeah, I know, right? That's your method. I got it from you, man. All right, but keep. I'm sorry, dude. keep going. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, it's. I'm getting calls, but it still looks like we're gonna have to wait, you know, a couple of weeks before we really get started on it. So, um, and then as far as the vending goes, all of the places where my machines are, are all open. Right. I figured they'd be closed. I actually called it today and asked if you know they're all open and running, and everybody says they're open. So, well, that was something that me and you were talking about before we hopped on the stream. Was that um, everybody's doing the, you know, you can drive up and and do it. So for everybody who doesn't know, I broke my phone today. Check this oh. out. Pretty gnarly break there. And I was like, literally, um, the governor announced yesterday that we were going to be going into like a mandatory quarantine starting, um, starting today. And I was like, I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to go to Best Buy, but Best Buy is doing curb delivery or whatever. And the thing is, is that in the same shopping center, there's a Target, so you can walk into Target, go all around the store and shop. But going to Best Buy, I gotta wait outside and like ask them, tell them what I need and everything. I noticed that here too because uh, we were in Modesto yesterday, and I seen a bunch of people standing out in front of Best Buy, and it's literally the same thing. There's like a barn, not a Barnes and Noble, a Target right next door, and like a PetSmart. Right, but every those people are just walking in and out of there. So I don't know. It's it's funny how everybody's on like different pages, you know. I know it's so weird because like even in Target, dude, there's plenty of people just there's a few people just shopping around, you know, having a good time, and you know, other people are wearing their masks and being yeah, crazy. I think, uh, yeah, I know a lot a lot of people say that they shouldn't be wearing masks, but like my wife was saying, you know, some people that are maybe immune compromised, you know, it might be a good idea for them to wear a mask, or if they already have it, or. Or have anything really, any kind of a cough. It's good for them to have, it, especially if they're out in public. Right. But, so the mask is more defense for other people, so that way other people don't get. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of how I understand it, you know. Right. Um, Sean says you guys getting in the stock market. Dude. Stuff is cheap. So that's crazy that he brings that up because actually we are tonight. We're actually look. We actually look into because we have a Fidelity account, so we're looking right. into that. But I think what we're going to end up doing is actually going to go into. Uh, use robin hood or weeble mm -hmm. and we're gonna go tonight and we're gonna look into some I, I have one that i've been having my eye on so i don't want to say anything on here but hey dude why not there's only 32 people in here dude i want to know what it is okay so if you guys are buying stocks i'll tell you the one that i'm looking for okay and it's just a hunch i don't have any inside info or not but it's called luckin like the word luck i in on the end okay and it's a japanese company that i think will be a rival to starbucks once it comes over to us luckin looking dude, there's so you no way, look into it. i don't want, i don't i mean i I know a few little things it's kind of technology based and it's a whole different market than what starbucks is starbucks people more like kind of want to go there and chill and kick it whereas this is more of a people in a hurry trying to get their coffee that tastes good but also ain't got time to be bs and you know what i mean so the market is more of a it's an app based kind of thing and they're talking in i think it's in china right now they got like vending machine like robots Right. So you basically like drive up, you can order your coffee online, drive in, get your coffee, and you're out. You know, so some people are in a hurry, they want good coffee. That's kind of the market for it. Tim, you're gonna support the robots, man. That's that's messed up, Dan. Fine. By the time they, you know, we'll be half robots by the time they're starting to take over anyway. So we'll all right, that. all right. That's enough of that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If anybody has any if anybody has any stocks that they're looking to get into um and capitalize on, please put those in the group chat so that we can all um, you know make a little extra money let's yeah, see sure. let's see what else we got in here enter the giveaway keep up the good work with i'm i don't know who that is somebody did a give a giveaway shouts out to lamont aka black bigot check out oh, our collab yeah, what's up, lamont? lamont at large <laughs> what channel is that? is that the cemetery channel yeah he that's the one where he did cemeteries he said he got like i, I want to say he got 
35,000 subscribers in a year just uh, going to cemeteries and like telling the story. Really? Like, dude, I was like, yeah, bro. I was like, that's crazy. 30, 35 or 40, something like that. Oh, look. I wonder if I could put it on the TV. And that's his second channel. Oh, oh yeah, come on, is. dude. Look at us on the on the TV. Yeah. What I like to do little shout outs. I do all the little shout outs on this TV on my channel. Like they're my intro, you know, so I'll roll some of the friends on there and give them a little TV shout out, you know. Right. Evo Moore says, I can't even buy any live chickens. <clears throat> Where's he at? Where's Evo Moore at? I don't know. Evo Moore, if you're still in here, yeah. tell, tell us where you're at, bro. Can't even buy any group any uh any chickens, not even with Groupon. Not even with Groupon. I don't even know what Groupon is. Um, Irish based, yes, I am. Is that what it is? <laughs> no, not you. I think he's talking about the app, the Chinese oh. based one. I'm also Irish based, by the way, in case you are were you, wondering. Are you really inquiring minds? Oh, Laughlin, bro, I got apostrophe in my name, dude. Okay, maybe yeah. that's what he meant then. Maybe that's what he meant. I think so. Maybe. Oh, uh, so PD says it's an anti uh hipster Starbucks, basically. Oh, see, see, these guys already know. No, I think he's asking. Oh, anti hipster Starbucks. Oh, a that's what a question mark means. Right, yeah, right, right. I think it is kind of like that. <clears throat> Let Prom me know if you guys make a buck. I want. Pro yeah, Promo Fitness said he's gonna get in on that, bro. I want point 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 seven percent. Power washers or robots. I love it. Thank you guys all for hopping in here. We're really supposed to be talking about how it affected our business, but I'm gonna run through some of these uh, some all of these right. messages we got in here and see what we got. Brazil says hello. I appreciate your channel and all things that you do and we'll be okay in small time absolutely shout out to william shout out to you bro thanks for the thanks for the comment boba detailing in lafayette louisiana is slow as hell for me dude everybody's at their house you know um and everyone's still driving around just like me and tim said like you can do curbside and technically you're not meeting anywhere to gather so i don't see what the dilemma would be to you know go to someone's house and provide a service what do you think tim I don't think so either. I don't think it's a problem at all, honestly. I mean, you're still so, working, right? Don't you? Aren't you still picking up jobs? Yeah. So I, I am. I am picking up jobs. Um, so I was actually working at a project for a teacher when this, when the whole thing started before we had shelter in place orders, mm -hmm. and I was working in her house. So I kind of was lucky. I was already on a job, but since I was already there, and it was a long job, we were there for about two and a half, almost like two and a half weeks. Right. So then she added on some stuff. He's like, you know, I don't really want to hire anybody else. You've already been in the house. So like you want to do all this other work. So I just kind of decided to jump in and do the other work for her. That way it puts her less at risk. And then, you know, kind of me less at risk too. Cause I'm just, and then literally, I know I say this all the time, but the job, like I could throw a baseball from my back of my house and hit the house that I'm working at. So it's super close to home. There you so go. I've been lucky. Like I've been like, there's a lot of people out there <clears throat> that are not so lucky. Like I have my sister, she's a bartender. And she's, you know, out of work and everybody's, you know, says, oh, they're going to get all this money and blah, blah, blah. But nobody's getting any money yet because the computers are crashing and like nobody can get through. Even on if the they phone. did. I mean, what, are you talking about the how they're going to give everybody like a thousand dollars or something? Yeah, I guess there's a nonprofit organization that was going to reach out and like help everybody out with like some money on top of the government was going to help, too. But it's based off of like your 2018 tax returns. Okay. That's how they're going to base off how much and who gets what. And if you're bartending a couple of years ago, they switched it to where you're an in you're in California, you're an independent contractor. Right. So technically you don't get W-2s or pay taxes, you're you know, 1099. So a lot of these servers that are working in the bartending field and a lot of like the bartenders and food servers and in industry, they're getting hit hard. And dude, it I feel bad, man. I feel bad. Hopefully they were saving before, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh Grizzly to kids said airlines are a good stock to invest in. Always, dude. Boeing's constantly going up. Constantly. Yeah, dude, Boeing. I think it's gonna be funny though, huh? Yeah, it is funny, right? But hey, think about how much they gouge us for pricing and stuff. That's why Justin, you wouldn't know, dude. You don't fly. Dude, I don't fly, dude. I just stay fly. What? You know what I'm saying? How come you don't, how come you don't fly? Because I'm too fly to fly, baby. No, I do fly. I flown I've flown a couple times. Um Aravello says, do you guys think right now is a good time to invest? <clears throat> not for me. I'm, I'm not going in the stock market right now unless I'm investing in some biotech um, company that's, you know, providing safety equipment, you know? Oh, Alavero, I think so, man. I really, in my opinion, I, I everything that I'm hearing people are saying is a good time because things are low, right? So, for instance, 
I forget which stock it was, but a buddy of mine was talking to me about something. I think it was Budweiser. Budweiser maxes out at about 120. Right now it's at like 58. So, I mean, if you get a bunch of shares and just sit on them, I mean, eventually it's going to get up to 120, 130 again, right? Right. But, I mean, who has like that expendable income right now? I mean, unless you really saved, but <clears throat> yeah. or unless you work at like Walmart or Target. Dude, the lady at Target today, first of all, they start their employees off at like 12 or 13. And then she said, that they're giving them a two dollar bonus for the next six weeks. So the lady at Target's making fifteen dollars an hour, and like, oh. dude, in Cali that might not be a lot, dude. But over here in Louisiana, dude, fifteen—that's like wage? that. Fifteen bucks an hour is like minimum wage out here. It's that's double minimum wage. So that'd be like if they were making thirty out there. Oh damn, that's good. Well, that's good, man. Hopefully, you know. <clears throat> Hopefully some of the people that are doing better can help out the people that, you know, need it right now. It's kind of what I'm hoping. Agree. Yeah. And the lady that was working there today, she said that she had just gotten the job. She, it was her first day on the job because her, her husband had gotten laid off. And so he, uh, she had to pick up a job. So, I mean, incredible, kudos, kudos incredible, to time. incredible time. So I've been fortunate. I mean, I got to check on the vending machines. Uh, what is today? Thursday. So Thursday, I'm going to go check on them. And see, last week I went and checked and it seemed like business as usual. Dang, things were empty. And I just told them, hey, I'm not going to worry about restocking them. But now they're calling me saying, hey, they're empty. You're going to restock them. I'm like, dang, all right. Well, uh, I guess. So I'll they're working it. still? Yeah, they're still working. Sorry. Let me turn this off. There you go, bro. Evo Moore said, I made $60 from Groupon today. I put $100 in three days ago. What's Groupon? What is that? Wait, how do you make? Groupon is like where you get coupons uh, for different things. So Evo, so, if you could expound on that, that would be awesome. Yeah, you, did you you saved sixty? I mean, that's a good way to look at it. If you save it, you know, you're technically making it right. If you're dollar already saved, a dollar earned, right? Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, Vinbiz says, "What's up, fellas? Hope y'all uh, staying safe." Absolutely, my man. That's not Tim. We ain't we ain't ever staying safe out here. Here, I'm going to share this uh, live stream real quick, so give me a second. There you go, man. Glizzy the Kid said airlines are a good investment in the stock market. Like I said, I don't know if that's a joke or not. Maybe it's not. Ricky Ricky says, yo, what is up, Ricky Ricky? AFC vending in the house. Bro, this virus is shutting everything down. Don't we know it? We're not allowed to say that. I How you doing, I Jamie? I not even said that. <clears throat> How you Both. doing, Jamie? Hopefully You're Jamie's doing good, man. Both like Lucky Charms. Is this the house? They said, "Is this the house painting guy?" Yeah, I'm the house painting guy. I've never been called that before, but <laughs> yeah, the house me. painting guy. <laughs> Who's the, who paints houses and has two thumbs? This guy. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all be sure to go check out Tim O'Laughlin on YouTube and go subscribe to him. He makes great content, and we will have a collab very soon, very very soon. Yeah, what well, should have been last week, really, right? Right. So Tim was supposed to fly out. I don't know if you guys saw my recent landscaping video, but Tim was supposed to fly out um, before all this nonsense happened. It's so weird how, you know, your life can go from one extreme, like just from so normal to like now the way it is, you know, it kind of makes you, you know, you were, you know, the, like for granted. Right. Or appreciate the boring, like normal day to day stuff, you know? Right. We take for granted how normal and, you know, boring our lives were. But now it's like, dude, I just want to go back to it. Did you hear that? Big old helicopter flying over, dude. Really? Uh, watch all thirty of these people gonna be rich with that stock info. Absolutely. I don't remember what stock that was that Tim said, but hopefully somebody got it. Jennifer P said, "Any suggestions how I can find a handyman?" We're about to ask Tim and see what he says. Thanks in so advance. Um, so around here we have a local channel or a local Facebook group. It's like for the town, right? Or like, and I know that our town's small, so I know it's not because I've asked a lot of other people that I know, and I say, hey, you know, I just post on my city's like my town's page. But we have a small town, so I realize like a lot of other people don't live in such small towns. But my brother lives in Sacramento, which is like a metropolis. But he says they have one for like their community, their neighborhood. So what I do is just kind of go on there and just put up, you know, like, Hey, anybody looking for a painter, I paint, you know, and just put a little picture, some before and after pictures or even, um, of the project that you want to get done, you know, and then somebody can, or has anybody know a local painter or whatever, like, or Dude, what you're looking for? the quickest way. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I would just ask around on Facebook and then people would definitely refer you somebody. That's a quick way. Have you ever seen anyone ask for suggestions on Facebook and then within like an hour, it's got like 40 <laughs> comments on it. Right. Yeah, so, so that's what happens over here on our page. And, and the cool thing is my name gets brought up a lot, which is really helpful. So I get a lot of referrals that way. That's right. That's why I tell people to grow their Facebooks and stop playing around out here. Make shareable yeah. content. Yeah. Jennifer P. I would just go on Facebook and just ask. I think this guy's talking about the coffee. I place a coffee filter in, in my mug. Then I place three tablespoons of coffee in it. Then I place the mug under my Keurig and let it rip. Cheap coffee over buying K-Cups. That's the Keurig, the Keurig hack right there. <laughs> Solified. That's the way to do it, though, right there. There you go. I don't even drink coffee. You drink coffee, Tim? No, I drink soda. <laughs> oh, Mountain Dew, man. You know, it's bad. <laughs> I gotta quit. Quit smoking. So now the next thing on my list is to quit this crap. But give me some time. Give me some time. Ricky Ricky said, thankfully I still have commercial work. Um, not so much residential. Absolutely. Just buy and hold Bitcoin, says Kendall. Kendall thinks Bitcoin's gonna be big. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's smart. I heard to buy Iraqi dollar too. The the what's it called? The Iraqi dollar. Oh my Iraqi dollar. But you can't buy it. You have to buy it from like an independent dealer because banks won't touch it. The dinar, that's what it's called. Right. So one Iraqi dinar is 0. 0.00084 United States dollars. So, I mean, it's not even a, a penny, dude. So are you telling people to invest in that, Tim? What are you saying? I mean, you know, I've had some inside sources tell me to, to get into the, the Iraqi dollar. So if you could find a dealer, like a lot of coin dealers um, have access to that kind of stuff. Right. But I don't know. I don't know enough. You know, I just I get people that I trust and like I kind of look up to and they just kind of throw me little breadcrumbs here and there. And, you know, but why though? Why would they say go to the Iraqi dollar? Um, I don't ask the right. I don't ask a lot of questions. <laughs> maybe because it's like so devalued, maybe. So let me look. Let's let's see what it says. If I look it up, let's see. Um. Uh, should I, how should I word it? Should I buy, invest, should I invest in the Iraqi dollar? <laughs> Let's see what it says. Okay, uh, Evo Moore is still in here. I used Robinhood and I bought a couple shares. I put in 100 and got 200 shares. I made $60 in profit today. Maybe he's talking about he invested in Groupon. Oh, I see what he's saying. Because people are using coupons more. I think that's what he's saying. Oh, dude. I like it. I'm going to write that one down. Hey, all right. Thanks, shouts out to Yeah, shouts out to Ebo. He made $60 in profit today investing in Groupon. If y'all have any other stocks ding, that, you ding, think ding. We sh that you think we should invest in, let us know. Let's see stocks. Yeah, let's all get some money, man. We all got to get some money. Change it around. We got to hustle hard and get that money, baby. Peace. Peace. Wait, no, don't go anywhere. I'm not. Anyway. Yeah, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Promo Fitness says post a link to your YouTube channel. So if you want Tim's YouTube oh. channel, just search his name right there on the screen. Oh, is that what he's saying? I'm gonna Tim O'Loughlin. My YouTube channel too. On my yeah, post. can you put it in the chat? I put it on my Facebook. Oh yeah, I'll put my uh I'll put my link in here. Are you I guys look are you, this dude said, um, are you looking into any other hustles during this cry during this? I'm not even gonna say the word because <laughs> Yeah, I am. I am, I am, I am. Um reselling, really, but it kind of bummer, <laughs> man. I was already getting into it, you know, and then like <laughs> like I got this big old giant tub of Legos that I need to clean and sort and sell. So I, I'm definitely getting back on the eBay thing for sure and garage sales and just reselling locally, like on a uh, marketplace and offer up. I think it's easy money, man, really. Dude, so this whole deal has killed two different collabs for me. Dude, I was supposed to collab with you, and then I was supposed to be going down to see Jeffrey this weekend because he does eBay reselling. I was supposed to do a video with him, but. Damn, dude, I know. It's such a drag, dude. Ugh. I know. <laughs> Could you oh, ask him? Yeah. Oh. What, what were you going to say, bro? I was just going to comment on the fact that I'll be down, you know, sooner, soon, soon enough. It'll be soon. Right. April, could you. You think do you think late April or what? Yeah, I think late April. If anything, May, but I'm hoping sooner than later. Right. Could you ask Tim what he would recommend as a good beginner sprayer and if one is worth getting? Yeah. So 
what do you mean beginner as far as starting like your business up or as as like probably so probably something like on the cheaper side i would think <clears throat> well so when buying these pumps there's a rating that's good to look for and it's um, a gallon per minute right or gallons uh, per year sorry certain pumps are only rated for so many gallons in a year <clears throat> i i think <clears throat> excuse me dang it <clears throat> i think that uh they have these small Graco pumps and that's a brand Graco is a, a brand they run about three to four hundred dollars i think that's not a bad pump to start out with but i also think that um i also think that um buying an even better pump is better in the long run. So having multiple pumps is good. So I guess the answer to the question is I wouldn't start out with that Harbor freight pump because that's like something you would use to maybe spray a fence once a year or something like that at your house. But if you get like the second tier, maybe the third tier Graco pump, which I think you get at home Depot pretty much anywhere. Um, it's about four to $500, but it's worth it because those pumps will last you a while. Now, if you're thinking you're going to get into the paint business and you're going to do a lot of painting for a long time and be painting like big houses and stuff, I would just spring and buy the, the $2,000 pump and probably like a Titan. Uh, Titan's a little, I think it's a better brand. It's more of a um, industrial type of brand, whereas Craco is kind of a DUI all the way up to industrial. Like they have industrial rigs too, but like Titan doesn't make a consumer like, you know, uh, type of rig i guess is he but gray co does so to answer the question man start off with like the three or four hundred dollar gray co I, that's right. what i that's what i started with and that thing lasted me for a long time there we go cody i hope that helps you out man gray co we got a uh i'm so i'm going down the list of the chat but we have to skip down to the bottom because mark side out just sent mark, a ten dollar yeah. super chat dude hey thanks mark I wish I wish I had like those Twitch streamers, like something that like went off and like played music or something. <sighs> See, Mark Mark has fifteen million dinar. <laughs> so what is that? That's a hundred. That's like fifteen thousand bucks. I right? think he was joking though. Huh? You think he's being serious? Oh, no, Mark is Mark is a money man, dude. I told you. He's dude, the dude. Mark is a hustler, dude. If you guys want to check out a good YouTube channel, check out Mark's side out. That dude is. I don't know if he posts on YouTube as much, but not as much. But I mean, dude, he's the he's the man, dude. He knows about his business. He's my age too. One for the old guys, dude. Mark's Mark's one of the old dudes crushing it out here. Brandon right. B in the chat, dude. What's up, Brandon? Brandon B. Okay, wait. We gotta go back up. We gotta go back up because I want to answer everybody's, you know, message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, vegetable oil in it. Let's see. Can't find YouTube. Did you drop a link to your YouTube on um? Oh my god, I did. I did, I did, I did. Where is it at? Josh Spencer said, what's up? What's up, Josh Spencer? I did. I'm pretty sure I did. Pulam says, I am a painting contractor in NorCal, Sacramento. Just picked up three exteriors. Same thing. Work is still going strong. Don't know if I should start them or what. Going to probably hold off at least a week for. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, like me and you were saying, Tim, a little bit earlier, I mean, people are still doing the drive through thing. I mean, dude, every fast food restaurant is open for us. Every um, – is, is your painting shop still open, the place where you get your paint at? Yeah, the painting shop's open. I called them the other day too. All right, I just dropped it, but it's not allowing my link to go through. I don't know if it's like a – if you go uh, my – Okay. I wish I could pin your comment, but I don't know how to do that. I'll paste my name and swipe it into the toolbar. It'll take you right to my channel. My channel is just my name. Right. Maybe if you like send in like a like a five hundred dollars super chat <laughs> and your name would just be at the top the whole time, dude. I think that'll solve the problem. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. I, the thing is, I'm on my computer. It looks a lot different because we're in StreamYard, you know. Right. All right, right. So y'all so go. Is Mark in the chat still? If he's in the chat, um, he's making some moves and he's like, um, he's been doing pretty good with the reselling. Dude, and I know Mark, he's Mark does everything. Like, he does he does? You name it, Mark does it. Um, Here, I want to save this. I'm gonna share this to my YouTube. Okay, bro. Let's see what else we got. Yeah, we got two of them are me because I got it on the TV back here, and then also. Oh Shaniqua phone. asked a question. Ten thousand to spend on resale items. What do you buy? Go. 
Ten racks, I'm, dude. I'd probably I'm, flip a car or something with ten thousand. I think I'd put it into shoes because sneakers are real big right now. I'd flip something more expensive, dude. I don't know. I don't know that much about reselling, so I couldn't. It's hard, it's hard to tell, but I mean, some of them shoes, bro, be selling for freaking thousand bucks, man. That's a good I, question. When I talk to my buddy Jeffrey, I'm ask him what he would do if he had ten ten racks to re, whatever. Probably diversify it, honestly, dude. T take like yeah. a thousand for reselling, a thousand for something else. Like, go crazy. Um, Poolam says you can get a nice Titan 440 for about nine hundred dollars. Yeah, see, night the 440s are good pumps, and that'll do that. That'll do the trick. You can spray like the outside of a house with that without any kind of lag or streaming, and then. So the problem with those smaller pumps, it'll take you a little bit longer because it doesn't really want to push that much paint. But those Titans are bad. I, I have a Titan. I have a Titan. I have a Graco 595 and a Graco 695 too. But I, I, the 595 is like my bread and butter. I just think it keeps on trucking. Mark said he bought that Iraqi currency when he lived there. And then he said, haha, I am OG or maybe just old. <laughs> yeah, both. both, both. <laughs> uh danny says love your game keep it up thank you danny appreciate you brother uh bought a car from an auction a while ago and resold it they are still open i don't know the, the car auction still open yeah i'd love to do some auction stuff maybe buy storages too i kind of was thinking about getting into that when i first started all this kind of online hustle stuff last year right um let's see arbello says what do you guys think about getting to real estate investment like buying a house and putting it for rent i think that's the end goal baby that's that's my end goal for sure i think that is definitely the end goal absolutely um ruby was it rugby clark 13 says, right. so it is working or isn't working he probably just means he clicked through or she <clears throat> she clicked through and it worked. I don't know. If you guys want to find Tim's channel, he commented my channel in the chat. So just scroll up and go subscribe to him really fast. But I mean, he'll be featured on my channel a bunch more times. So you'll yeah, subscribe can't. to him sooner or later. Sooner? Oh, the sneakers are lame. Forever get your hustle on. Yeah, I mean, I don't think sneakers. I mean, I dude, I wear Vans. This is only shoes and boots. So you I wear mean, Vans? Dude, they, they got that's got to be terrible for your feet, Tim. Come on, bro. It's horrible, it's horrible dude. It's horrible. <laughs> bro dude that van life that's that cali surfer van life yeah that's a skate shoe man that's i don't know what are you gonna do you know so that way you're ready to skate at any time right Tim? oh secret word yeah it's been a while though man this youtube took up all my extra like that kind of time lonzo's in here dude what's up alonzo lonzo said when you guys coming to vegas dude you <laughs> you just came to louisiana dude that was my neck of the woods baby Let's see. I think I'm gonna go down for the vending, the next vending convention. I think it's coming up in like towards the end of the year or something. I feel like a lot of them said it was boring. The yeah, but I'm just that's where everybody's gonna be, so I'm gonna go down there. I might not even go to the stupid convention, just well, go down to go. That was the funny thing, dude. Is we were trying to decide when you were coming down, whether or not you were gonna come down the same time as them, and then should have, dude, because you were saying, dude, you're like, why don't you just come down the same time? We could drive down there, mess with those guys, hang right. out with them. It's like, ah, because I was on that cabinet job. That video I just released it was like a three week job. And I was like, I got to finish this job. I can't leave her high and dry. But and in hindsight, dude, I probably should have just been like, hey, I'm taking off for a few days and I'll be back. You know, right. Mark said next time we do this uh, to let him know he'd love to join us. So, yeah, dude, Mark will be here definitely next time. All right. Can we call him? Can we call him? Can I can probably him? invite him. You want me to try to invite him? Yeah, invite them. Okay, Mark, have, if, if you have a smartphone, um, send me your email. Or he, if you want to blast his email, you could text me it, and then I could text it to you or whatever. Right. Or I could text number, I guess, real quick. Well, you can't text it to me because my phone is jacked. Oh, that's right. You right. have to email. Oh. Well, he can just drop his email, dude. What are people going to do, spam his email? I guess, I guess, I guess. Okay. Um, Go Six Stream says, what's the secret word? What's the word of the day, Tim? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You guys can pick the word of the day. Uh, dirty rice. <laughs> right. McJebinlinunglu wants to talk yeah, about word Jesus. Of the, word of the day is dirty rice. 
And I want to know if anybody else in this chat knows what dirty rice is. Does anybody know what dirty rice is? Because I asked I know him this and he it, did not know. It's not called that over here. Right. It's Dude, get, so hey, check it out. If we get Mark in this chat, we'd have California, Louisiana, and Florida. We'd be like boink, boink, all the way across. Oh, the all the way across the sweep in the nation, dude. Like nation, dude. Like Rona. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> What'd you say? Ronan? No, Rona. I prefer to spam my grandma's AOL with malware. I don't get so, it. So if I want to start a painting business or a power washing business, do I have to get a license to run it? Or you want to hop on that one? Dude, I know that this is like controversial to say, but dude, just get out there and do it. See if you like it, dude. If you like it, just, you know, just work for people that you know at first. You know what I mean? And then if it's something, yeah, then you go get a handyman license. A quick way. And I don't, it's different. It varies, right? State to state. California, it's kind of a headache. So, but you can get a handyman license, and that'll get you on the job. And then you have to be kind of creative with how you price because there are limits on what you can make per job as a handyman. Right. And then you know, there that's a, a way around it, which I did for a while in the beginning. And then, um, you know, if you know that you want to do this, is what you want to do, then you go ahead. You pay the three hundred dollars, and then that signs you up for the schooling. You take the schooling, the class. You take a test at the end of the class. Once you pass the class, you get your certification that says, you know, you are now a business owner. From there, then you pay insurance, work in, workman's comp and all that. You set a DBA up at the bank. In a business account, you typically have to have a certain amount of money in the bank in order to, to hold the account. Right. So you're prepared to have some money sitting that you can't touch because it just has to be, it has to be in there. And then also, like, if you're going to have employees or you need to, like, use the money for stuff, you know, it's it's rough because like you got that money sitting there, but you can't pull it out. So, so that's why like a lot of employers say, Oh, we withhold the first couple of weeks of checks because then you have to have a certain amount of money in the bank and blah, blah, blah. But yeah. So there's a lot to think about and make sure if you're going to do it, that's what you want to be doing. Cause after you put all that time and effort, you're going to have to run with it. Good answer, Tim. Shouts out to my buddy CB visuals. This dude's been support. CB has been supporting me for like, dude, I can't even say how long dude. it's been so long. So thank you so much. CB comments on like every video. It's a real one for sure. YouTube would show you a way to like see like who was like some of your first subs and stuff. That'd be cool to like see like your first like 10 or 20 subs. Where, you know, I think like, they'll show you the people that interact with your content the most, right? Find that? I don't know how to find it, but I mean, I think they'll do it, you know? Um, uh, Charlie says, I bought a 2004 Explorer from Carport, a Copart. Copart Auto Auctions for a thousand dollars has one hundred fifteen thousand miles, dude. If that thing drives good, I could sell that for at least like probably three grand, at least three grand to thirty five hundred. I would say maybe even more. I don't even know what kind of condition it's in. Hey, did um did Ray's ever call you because he was talking about he wanted to call you because he's talking about he wanted to get into flipping cars and stuff? <laughs> yeah, dude. He did. I think he mentioned that to me. He wanted to try to flip cars. And I was like, I think yeah. he, he asked me for some advice on flipping cars. And I was like, dude, like you just got to get bit a couple of times. And he realized about what works and what doesn't, you know? Yeah. I got an old Geo Saturn. Mm -hmm. It's just shit. It's totally fine. It needs $300 worth of work. But I'm like, I don't think I can sell that thing for more than freaking 500 bucks. You know, dude, it's got if like I was out there, dude, we would fix that bitch up and then try to flip it. Dude, I, I mean, I have it. It's just sitting at my cousin's tow yard or whatever. I need to get it. Really? Dude, anything that runs over here, I could probably get at least $1,500 for. That's crazy. Just anything that runs, huh? Yeah. Uh, Shaniqua wants to know better to buy vending machines, new or used? What kind of machines? Definitely oh. used machines. Easy question. That's an easy question. You don't think so? Would you buy new machines? That's a loaded question because, I mean, it's like, okay. <clears throat> how much money do you got? You yeah, know? that's true. That's true. How much money do you have? You know, what kind of locations are you going for? Because if you're going to like mechanic shops and stuff like that, I don't think you need to put a big, nice $3,000 machine in there. But if you're going to like a factory or something, break room, then yeah, maybe. I, I think it would be wise to do that. Or right. a public location, you're going to want the shiniest, best looking machine you can get. I would say get me, I, new enough to have a card reader on them. Yes, yes. Try to get MDB compatible machines because yes i i was able to install the blue range right little keys they're like about this big and you like install it on the machine and then it just communicates with the phone and then you download the app and you like load money to the app and then you pay with the app 
So the one of my locations, they love it. They're using it. So that's pretty stoked about that. Right. Let's so does anybody know what dirty rice is? If you know what dirty rice is, leave it in the comment section. Uh Evo said dirty, dirty rice sounds racist. <laughs> What is a decent pressure washer to buy at Lowe's or Home Depot? Maybe even Harbor Freight. Anything Harbor with Freight decent pressure washers? I think they do. I mean, I think they have like some nor like you know. I probably got to look at buy anything from Harbor Freight then. But it's still gonna cost like four or five hundred bucks, you know. So yeah, I would say anything with like at least twenty five hundred psi. I wouldn't get anything that plugs in because that just sounds like a pain in the ass. Um, right, and then. Sure or something wash your car that's all they're good for and then anything with a honda engine so that's what i would say you know i prefer to spam my grandma's aol with malware we love it okay um cb says dirty rice is brown rice no that's not correct zataran baby that's right zataran do you know what zatarans is tim oh yeah zatarans yeah i've had it's like a like a yeah like gumbo rice yeah okay like a gumbo rice i'm trying did, and stuff in it. okay yeah did you uh you sent mark the um what you gonna call it oh, oh you know what for get his email and then forward him the email that i sent you because that has the link to get in here i think i have his email let me see right big shout out to my buddy pierre he says yo i'm in here pierre is the man y'all make sure to go check him out for all of your real estate needs dude it's oh, like yeah. a Dude, Pierre's a smart guy, dude. And he hooked me up with his course for free, dude. I was like, man, you are the man, bro. So he's the one who's been kind of guiding you through your because you've been talking about you're going down right. that road. But I'm uh so I'm still getting my license. So once I get my license, I'm gonna run through his course and then and then we'll go from there. But um uh Pierre's an apartment locator, so like he doesn't even like sell he sells houses too, but he keeps his business by doing apartment locating and he earns commission off of being able to put people in apartments. So like the thing is, is like even if we were in a down economy, people would still need a place to live no matter what, right? So people exactly. are still going, right? So he's, there's people are still going to be looking for apartments. So no matter what, he's still in business, you know. And then he gets like a commission of the rent. Is that how that works, or what? Right, right, right. So he's in Texas, and um, he said most of his deals he'll get seventy five to like one hundred and fifty percent of the first month's rent. So like if people move into like a two bedroom, like anywhere from like twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars. He could be making, you know, 75 to 150 percent of the rent. And he even had a video, dude, where um he wrote down his broker's name. Like, so he bought an apartment, right? And the apartment that he bought had a three month, like the first three months free. And then they also had like whenever they also had a commission rate of like the first two months worth of rent or something like that, something to that effect. So he, when he signed the lease, he got the first three months free and he sent his broker the commission. So basically he got like five free months of rent just because he wrote on there. That's that's cool, man. Dang, that seems like something I want to get into. But you have to have a real estate license in order to do that. Right. Damn, my sister has a real estate license. I should talk to her about that. That's the thing is a lot of people don't know about apartment locating, dude. So that's why I had I had him on the channel. So Mark is texting me, what do I need to do? So I'm going to forward him that link real quick. Yeah, forward him the link and just tell him all he needs is a smartphone. He'll be good to go. Um, you. I think, yeah, dirty dirty, dirty rice is going to be the word of the day, dude. Easy. So let me go to Gmail real quick. Boom, boom, boom. Rugby Clark says Honda GX 390 engine. Absolutely. Any pressure washer you get should have that. I've been here since 10K. CB's the man. Active oh. since 15. He knows it. He knows his numbers. Copy URL share link. Oh, look. Jacob Rodriguez says, Cali in the house. What up? Getting that money. Shouts out, yeah. brother. It's my Cali people in the place. That's Tim's neck of the woods right there, baby. That that van life. Rocking some vans. Um, let's see. Let's see. <clears throat> oh, here's Mark's email. Okay. Oh, wait. Hold on. Well, he just clicked this link. So just click that link texting him right now Just click that link right right right, right. Mm. yeah business has been good despite everything my wife's a nurse so she's been working my kids are out of school my my oldest daughter's it's her senior year so she's stressing out man because she's like i don't know what's gonna happen you know she's gonna miss out on all kinds of junk but i just tell her there's a lot of more people worried about a lot of <laughs> worst kind of stuff right now i don't think that's a really big deal but 
I get it. I totally get it. Dude, check it out. Mark's in here. Yo, Mark. There he is, dude. What's up, Mark? <laughs> what's, what's going on, fellas? Dude, we got the man in the place. Mark, these oh. people need to know how they can make money in the situation that we're in. So we need you to tell them. You're the money-making man. So tell buy them what's a, up. Buy a semi-load of baby wipes. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, can we talk about the situation that you and Tim got in with the reselling? Can we talk about that specifically or no? Uh, that's up to Tim, man. I don't care. It's over <laughs> and done with now. I got my 23000 in the bank. Go! <laughs> dude. A money making machine, dude. Mark is a big dog. That because that was just one, that was just one transaction. Like that four, wasn't even four days. Four days. Okay. Yeah. Tim, are you cool with talking about it or do you not want to talk about it? It's all good if you don't want maybe, to. Maybe maybe we can set that up for uh, the next time and we can prep a little bit because I want to. Okay, you want to go I, deep on that? Well, I don't necessarily want to go deep on it, but I want to, you know, right now is still a sensitive subject. So, right. Yeah, okay. sure. to, 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 be, to be fair, I, I did it a couple of weeks before all the, the, the stuff went down. So, yeah, I'd be better to get some data together so I can show you the time. <laughs> Oh, we're traversing controversial waters here. Um, Oscar says, let me hear that hustle hard and get that money, baby. Hustle hard and get that money, baby. Um, anyway, Mark, okay, so what what advice would you have for some people that are, like, sitting at home? They're worried. They're like, you know, what can I be doing in these troubled times? Look at that, bro. Is that hundreds? Uh, most of it. Well, not really. I got old school hundreds. See? Oh, that's cool. Oh, Dude, you better save those, man. Nah, they're only nineteen ninety, man. Oh, uh, really? Okay, yeah. never mind. But what what advice would you give? What are you up to right now? Uh, right now, I spent the last ten hours at my shop selling baby wipes. <laughs> so baby wipes are the move right now. Well, so what happened is one of my wholesalers called me from Miami and said, "Hey, I got ten pallets of baby wipes. This was last week." Mm -hmm. Um, so I was like, "Well, you know, no one can find them anywhere around me." Um, I was I was able to purchase them cheap enough to where i didn't have to price gouge and i could sell for under retail and still make really good money so that's what i've been doing the soul awesome. and it's considered like an essential need too right so there won't be any problems like shipping. yeah i mean it, it's a touchy area because like right now my amazon got shut down i mean i was doing like my best month yet this year is about a little over 10 grand like halfway shut through you the month down on amazon well they won't let you send anything in right now so they won't let um, anybody send anything in? Only essential stuff. So like toilet paper, but there's no, I mean, you can buy toilet paper for $3, but by the time Amazon's taking their fees out for it, right. you know what I mean? You're losing money because they're, it's not necessarily a, what they call price gouging on an essential need. It's more of a markup that you would norm. Like I can go to Lowe's right now and buy a screwdriver. Say I find a deal. I mean, I get deals all the time for less than a dollar an item right. and I sell for $25.99. Amazon will take their $6 fee out and I make $18 profit. So it's an 1800% profit on an item. Now, if I buy toilet paper right now, I could buy it in bulk. I can get it for a hundred or a dollar 80 a pack right now. The problem is I could sell it for eight ninety nine on Amazon, but by the time I ship it in fees and everything like that, it's not worth it. I'd have to sell it. I would have to price gouge it fifteen ninety nine, twenty ninety nine to actually make a profit. So it's, Those are some heavy numbers. Uh, Mark, okay, where do you live at, if you don't mind me? Well, we maybe we talk about this off there. If you don't mind telling me the state, could you say I, the state or I, no? I, I live in Plant City, Florida. I live between Tampa and Orlando. Okay, dude, I might have to roll out and come visit you and do like a – I'm in like New a, Orleans like every other month. So. Really? For what? Yeah, I New Orleans, uh, the, the Harris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew that was coming. We, we get, we, get uh, we go out there. Me and the wife go out there. Well, during Free room. during football season, we we're usually there. This past year, I wasn't able to do much. My uh, dad was in a bad accident in November. Right. He finally just passed away. Um, Sorry to hear that, man. Uh, you know what? He's not suffering anymore. So we're right. we're not. You no, know, I'm never. I wouldn't. I would love to have him back for another, but he lived a good life, you know, so. Right. I just mean, I want to come down though so I can see yeah. what the business is looking like. Bro, man, he, any, anytime you want to come down, man, I got a spare bedroom for you and whoever. You're the man, brother. You're the man. We got so, Dominic. 
the so the title of this whole um this whole live stream was how everything is affecting our businesses so how is everything affecting your business right now mark man i'm not gonna lie uh business is still good like the nice thing about having multiple streams of income is you never have to rely on one source so you know i still have the company in the bahamas i still have the vending i still have uh, my shop i still have amazon i still have ebay i still have the rentals i have the arcade businesses so um you know money you know life's good right now. They haven't shut down any of the, my vending locations yet. Although I just sold with everything going on with my dad, I sold like 25 full line locations. All right. Um, so I haven't had to worry too much about it. I still have 11, like within five minutes of my house. Mm-hmm. So, and they're, they're all still open. So, I mean, that might change tomorrow, but you know, I, I'm okay with it. That's pretty incredible, man. Yeah, I think the multiple streams of income is where it's at, man. You have to you have to diversify, or otherwise you're going to be in trouble in times like these, you know. Right. And what would your philosophy be on saving as well? So, like, are you a saver, or are you more like I'm investing everything, like reinvest everything, reinvest everything? I. Uh, are you asking me? <laughs> yeah, I'm asking you. Yeah, yeah Mark. <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm not young like all the other kids out there, man. I'm like the old uh, old guy. Uh, so. No. Nah, I. Like yeah, I, I not, you know, I, I made good money with working for the government and I'm military and doing that for years. So I was able, I was fortunate enough when I, I just started vending shoot, you know, what, maybe 15, 20 months ago. So I'm not, I'm not like it, you know, I'm nobody special. I just, and you're I, special. I, yes, you are. <laughs> oh, you I'm, are. You, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very special. Being modest. Um, but. I forgot where I was even going with that. But I was just saying, like, do you, are you saving? Because, you, I mean, you have multiple streams of income, like you were saying. Is your philosophy no. with all these businesses to, like, do you save a portion? Or are you, like, more so, I'm reinvesting it all. We're going to keep growing everything. The vending I went, um, I, I reinvest everything. I went from having nothing to 240 bulk locations and 38 uh, full line up until November of last year. Right. Uh, now... I've recently sold uh, a majority of that to finance my arcade. I started, we started an arcade deal uh, in January. We got 29 machines out already. Um, so I just, that, that was a, that was a, we put in about 50 grand into that since January 23rd. <laughs> Tim was telling me he took your strategy for the marketplace. Tim, you want to tell him what that was? For the, for the marketplace for, oh for getting it's, it's, yeah, to get, dude so yeah so I, so mark's always saying i get all my, he's like i i have trouble getting machines for locations right so i was like dude what do you do so he sent me this ad i literally copied it i changed you know i put my city my town you know i changed because he has a little part in there about himself you know he's like i'm a veteran and stuff so i just put something about me instead and then I put it on Facebook and and the tricky part, right? That the, the, the way to get the clicks is put free vending machine service, right? So they don't see the service part until they click free vending machines. But so you get a lot of spam people. Oh, is this still available? Are these free? Where can I pick them up? You know, and right. it's like, you just got to ignore them. And no joke. He was right. He's like, oh, you put this on, you'll have a place within 24 hours guarantee. And no joke, dude. I had them. I had locations for both all four machines within 24 hours. Granted, I got about 120 messages, you know, saying, Are, "Is this available? Is this available? Is this available? Is this available? Where do I pick up?" You know, and I just right. just ignore them, ignore them, and eventually somebody's going to click on it and read it where it says, "Hey, this is a service." And the top line of the description says, "I'm offering a free service." Then I explain what the service is, you know, and so the people that took the time to read into it. Are the people that got machines at their locations now? You know right. what I mean. Plus, yeah. you just keep renewing them, and then you make a new one after you can't renew them anymore. Just renew it. Um, Some so, people are like, I hope you know you listed this in the free section. I'm like, thank you, free service. <laughs> Dom wants to know what kind of hat you're wearing, Mark. I just had this made in New Orleans. It's uh, actually just a uh, it's a new era hat fitted, and I had my this is the date my dad passed away, which oh, is man. the coolest date ever. It's uh, February twenty yeah. second, twenty. So you'll it's never a, see that a, date again. Yeah, it's an Which anagram is, uh, or whatever. Yeah, same so, forward and backwards. Yep. So that's, what? Uh, How cool is that? Yep. Same forward and backwards, dude. That's dope. So I mean, I'm. You it looks know, good. It's a good date. It's that's, a good date. That is a that's good date. Trippy man, that's trippy. Um. Okay, let's see what else we got. Um. So Shaniqua wants to know, what do you sell, Mark? 
<laughs> the question get... should be, what don't I sell? No, <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was gonna say <laughs> that. I was, everything legally? No, I'm just joking. Uh, no. <laughs> um, no, right now. So we have, of course, I do the vending, but I've all, on Amazon. I mainly do home improvement tools, um, stuff from home improvement stores, and then as far as my shop goes, we buy semis a couple times, uh, at least two a month. Uh, 53 foot, 26 pallet at auction, whether it come from Kentucky, uh, Georgia, North Carolina, we have it delivered. Uh, These are all returns, right, Mark? Returns and shelf pulls. So some of the stuff you get brand new, some of it would be return items. My market where I'm at, I'm in Central Florida. I'm in the uh, Plant City is a big farm town, farm community. We They produce like all the, the world's strawberries here, berries, stuff like that, fruit. Um but so we do get a lot of clientele where they want to come in and looking for fans, you know, like light fixtures. They're just remodeling houses. It's more of a not I want to say lower income, but there's a lot of like modular home uh, projects, stuff like that. So my shop, you know, when I can provide the same stuff, Lowe's is selling for 50 to 60 percent off, um, you know, it, it does real good in my area. Right, right, right. So Chad says that he is also he's in Tesla, which I don't. Oh, Tesla. I don't oh, know. Stock stock market. Is that I don't know. I don't know if that's Florida or not. Oh, reinvest no, in no, Tesla. Reinvesting Tesla. Yeah. All right. I don't know. Sean market. Hustler's in there. Oh yeah, Sean's in here too. What's up, Sean? Um, but are you in the stock market, Mark? <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It, hey, if it makes money, dude, Mark's there, right? Am I right? Yeah, I've. Um, yeah, I mean, not as heavy as I would probably like to be, but I like to have fun and enjoy life too. So, I've uh, made some stupid decisions when I was younger, uh, but now you know. Yeah, I'm in the. I'm in the market. Uh, mainly, mainly uh, buying holds though. I don't do day trading or anything like that. Okay, because I think Tim Tim brought up earlier that he was going to be investing in a company. I don't remember exactly which one it was, but um, yeah, uh, it's it's called Luckin. So it's like uh, it's a coffee company out of China, mm -hmm. and it's um they're expected to be like Facebook or Facebook uh, Starbucks rival, and it's like hey, uh, be careful, nothing out of China is going to be doing much right now. That yeah, true. that's true. <laughs> That's yeah. very true. <laughs> oh very god. True. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't I, it's weird like with every this is like a drastic change in everything like um even my Amazon sales, you know. Um uh, we just started getting to the point where we we're hitting four, three, four, five hundred dollars a day in sales and those have already started to fall, you know. Dang. But you know. It's what about you, goes, Justin? Yeah. I'm sure How's it affecting you, Justin? Have you been able to stay busy? Yeah, I mean, I'm busy, dude. I had I've had so many landscaping jobs, um, more than what I can do right now. But um, as far as pressure washing goes, it kind of slowed down a little bit. And what I do is I market whenever I need jobs, so I'll throw up more Facebook videos and I'll up my ad spend. Um, so I don't know. I haven't really been spending too much money. I had plenty of landscaping jobs, but I can't go to Home Depot or Lowe's right now just because I guess everything's shut down. You know. Um, but Chad wants to know if our volume is going down for the past few weeks. He said his Facebook lead ads for power washing and mulching have been taking a massive hit. Um, and he's thinking about turning them off. So I don't, I mean, I don't really advertise on Facebook aside from just putting up, you know, small videos on my personal page and like groups. Right. But like I said, I have been pretty fortunate here in California. Yeah. I, I don't pay for any kind of advertisement, all my advertisement. I mean, I, when I hire uh, new employees, I put, you know, ads out there for, for resume and monster stuff like that. But other than that, for buying and selling it, I do Facebook marketplace, but everything's free and local. Well, there you go. Um, Real deal spill says he's having a hard time marketing for his lawn care and power washing. Any tips? Um, so obviously, you sure. know, fl flyers. No. Is good. Go yeah, ahead, go ahead, go go ahead, man. This is not really my repertoire, but around here, if I was hurting for money that bad, I'd go to any house that has a yard over four inches and knock on that door. Right. Yeah. Okay. But that's the whole thing is like right now, I can't pass off flyers if I wanted to because people are going to be like, you know, not wanting to touch it, and I feel like people are going to be calling the police on me or something. <laughs> um, door to door. So, Mark, would you be cool? Are you cool with door to door sales? Would you? Would that be something that you would be doing if you didn't have any money? If I didn't have money, absolutely. I, there'd be all the things I'd do for if I didn't have money. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, I've never 
ever, my whole life I've, I've, I've had a I've had a job or started my own company at 13 so it's I've never been afraid to work and you yeah. know, it's a different mentality with uh, the younger generation of, yeah, certainly so but yeah, yeah I, would, I would no I mean right now I'd go door to door right now I'd go to my neighbors right now and knock on the door if I had something to offer them a service right. my whole thing is is like I don't want people knocking on my door so I don't go knocking on other people's doors do you ever get anybody knocking on your door Mark uh, UPS and FedEx, man. Right. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, uh, I don't, nobody knocks on my door except for no, the Mormons every now and then. Yes, they don't, yeah. but I mean, I mean, even like where I'm at now, I mean, not not maybe not even door to door, but I mean, you can go out and there's so many people. Like, uh, there, anybody that says they can't find work, they're just not looking hard enough. For you know right. what I mean? Like, there's work Dude, it's out not, there. It might not. It's be not what 2008. You want to do. It might not be what you want to do. It might not be what you want to get paid, but there's work out there. Right. So if I was going to so, give any advice to, if you, especially if you're in Facebook marketing or anything, make it mm-hmm. shareable. If you can find a way to make your content shareable, I mean, dude, um, it'll do it'll do the work for you. The best thing with Facebook market, if you do it on Marketplace, it's it's always good. But if you do it in private, I, I would recommend joining all your buy sell trade uh jobs local listings all your all your groups around your your local 25 30 mile radius of where you live and right um you just the public groups you can make them shareable i just found this out today with actually uh posting for the for the um you can make your messages in there shareable through the public group it public groups the messages become shareable the private groups they are not shareable so you would have to link them to your personal page and then tell them to share that one. Okay. They're yeah. only, yeah. So that's what I've found out. Right. Sean says um, Amazon sales are down. You good, Tim? Yeah, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Can you read that? Yeah, you're good. I couldn't read it, but that's good. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> um, Tim's on bathroom break. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Tim. Um, Invasion says any other good stocks to invest in? So, Mark, you, you said that you like to buy stocks and hold them for a while. Um, could you talk to like any of the stocks that you're currently that you currently have or uh, yeah no, if you I don't mean, want to it's cool if you don't want to it's all good no i mean it's you know like my you know stocks are down right now so the this is the time to buy like so i would you know anything that's been doing good for you the last two or three years i just recommend buying more right um if you're new to the game i would just stay heavy and and i mean i think actually the dude that's getting into tesla um they're they're coming out with these uh well you know rumor has it that he has these shingles coming out that are solar paneled and they're going to be the same price as regular shingles with a 25 year lifespan so if that happens tesla stock's going to be the next uh next best deal wow so are you current do you currently have any tesla stock yes but I mean, how far could it drop though with this whole, you know, with everything going on right now? I mean, they're, I mean, they're, you know, they're closing it down after so many points per day. So I, I don't know when. I don't know. There's no, you know, no one. That's the greatest thing about it. No one knows. But right. even if you buy now, you're still gonna next this year time next year you're still gonna be in a good spot. And they always say, you know, don't invest anything you're not willing to lose. You know, absolutely. Yeah. Don't. I mean, don't don't put your life savings or anything into it right now unless that's really you know what you guys are striving for but i right. i don't recommend that i mean if you guys got a couple grand to mess with um there's some sites out there now too that'll even let i'm sorry man my damn thing no you're good you're good you're good um there's some sites out there now that even let you buy like portion stocks so these a lot of these uh new newer stock uh, places are Allowing you to buy like you so you want to buy a hundred dollars of Tesla, it'll give you say point right. Point, you can point buy two three shares. Yeah, uh, so you don't have to buy whole shares. Back when I I first started buying Microsoft stock back in ninety six, when I was I was still underage, my dad had to purchase it under our my name, and that was back when stocks were splitting two or three times a year. So right. I used to take all my lawn mowing money and uh, buy stocks with it. Dude, how cool is that, man? OG. OG, OG. Um, I still got the old school stock certificates. Like, they don't even do that anymore. Can you imagine if you still had that Microsoft uh, stock? 
I do still have it. You still have it? How long have you had it for? 25 uh, 20. years or something? Hey, man, I'm not that old. No, oh, yeah. Well. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's since uh, 20, 23 years. Twenty. Okay, well, I was close. Okay, 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 okay. I think we're the same age, aren't we, Mark? How old are you? Yeah, something like that. 38. This is a Probably question. 81. This is a question for both of y'all. Uh, and Tim, you can go first. KNL Gumball says all of the businesses I have, my machines are shut down. Are yours That's cool, man. Sorry, Cole. Dude, he worked hard to build that business yeah, up. That sucks. Sister. The best like, advice I, I every- can give to anybody that has machines out there right now, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to pull them out and put them in your garage. I mean, you're not going to relocate them. You're, it's going to cost you more. Like, it sucks because no one's going to use the machines until you go and clean them, probably provide new candy. It's going to hit everybody. Right. But, I mean – I would just stay and hold this. This is going to ride it out for the next couple of months. I know it sucks. Hopefully it's not your only source of income or hopefully it's not your main source of income anyway. And, uh, you know, it's yeah, unfortunate. I, think K&L- I, I, I feel bad. So, uh, you know, that I, I've, I've fortunately been blessed where I don't have to worry. You know, I haven't had to worry about it. Um, but, right. you know. What were you going to say, Tim? Um, Cole, Cole's a youngster. I think he still uh, lives at home with his parents. I think he's maybe in high school. Yeah. So I think he should be all right. If you just hang in there. What about your locations? You said earlier that they're all still open. All my locations are open. So I have one at an auto body shop and auto body (coughs) essential, I guess. So they're totally open. And then I have another one at a moving facility and they're open. And then I have one at, um, it's a communication contractor down here. They like dig up the roads and put like, uh, cable lines and phone lines and stuff in the ground fiber and stuff right. and they're open you're talking about they're full actually line, full line? yeah full line yeah you don't have any bulk anymore do you um <clears throat> i have two bulk machines but one of them one of them shares shares the auto body shop with the, the full line and then the other one's at a bar and okay. that just does pretty good yeah you get Mark. like 50 60 bucks a month the bar just chills this would be a good break for you huh mark don't you have like don't you have like a hundred something uh locations or something 240. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, it's like it's not that many. Yeah. Dude, can you imagine calling 240 people being like, hey, no. open, are you all open, are you all open? No, I'm not doing dude, all I, that. Dude, I had like three or four honor box locations, and I low key like could not remember where one or two of them were the like couple weeks ago. I'm like, dude, I'm like counting. I'm like, wait, one? I'm like, oh. I couldn't imagine having 200 <laughs> machines to worry about. I got, I got them. I have to program it on a map. So just, I literally just hit next location and it, it tells me where to go. I mean, for the most part, I could probably tell you, like if we were driving, I could tell you where, where they all are. Like maybe 200 of them are, you know, that's so but, crazy, man. That's crazy. How big is the route for the for the bulk vending? Like, how long does it take you to run and service all of those? Can you wow. do all of those in one day? Oh no, 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 no! You're talking about eight days. If I do eight days. T- ten to twelve hour days. Holy moly, jeez! So but work, I, I, but but you spread them out. See, that's the thing, the beauty of it. Like you only you can collect these. You don't have. I'm not in any hurry for. I don't need to go out and collect them every twenty days to get my money back. So I can do. 60 90 day rotations on these routes when i go and collect them they have you know 100 150 dollars in the in the thing and now like the other day i collected eight locations collected 640 bucks for 60 days dude this is why i gotta come down to florida just because like this whole i mean you're youtube i mean this is why you're not focused on youtube it's because like you're killing everything yeah. else you know yeah, yeah you're crushing it everywhere else that's like, I, so true man I would uh no I love I, I miss doing YouTube I just uh you know with everything going on on top of it you know oh every, we completely really, understand dude You're really killing it me. all kind of kind of just died down when my when my dad had his accident and even before that like I was not that I was making so much money elsewhere it's just I was yeah. literally out filming when I clicked but then you forget I just forget you know and or 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 next thing you know I didn't make a completion video of like the you know everybody wants to see the money like I can show you money all day but it's you know is it believable yeah you know right so, yeah uh, like, and dude, filming is like a hassle like I think you know we got, we got I mean we got yeah there you go there's your collection video right there yeah yeah show exactly. what's up Oh, dude, this will be a perfect question for Mark. This guy earlier, Shaniqua, asked, um, asked uh, if I if you had ten thousand dollars, what would you buy to resell? 
And then he said, go. Like, what would be what? Like, if you had ten thousand dollars to spend, what in would a, you advise? In, in, a, in, a no, in a normal time, like in a normal st- situation, right? Like for me, it's different because I have access to Amazon accounts and eBay. Like, if you were, are you trying? Are, are they buying and selling out of their house? Or are they buying and selling out of a shop? That makes a huge difference. Like, you could buy ten thousand dollars of product, but if you have, if you have nowhere to put it, that's why everybody wants to get into the buying and selling of the semis. But yeah, it's not a, a big investment. Yeah, you can get a truck for seven grand, say, delivered, but you don't have a two thousand square foot warehouse that you're paying six thousand dollar deposit on. You know, yeah. so if you're, you can't put 26 pallets in your garage. So that right. would be the hardest question is like, do you have the, like 10 grand, if I was doing something out of my house and I didn't have access, if I was just selling local, like on offer up and Facebook marketplace. Right. Oh man, I would, uh, hmm. give me a minute. I'll think about it. I didn't mean to stump you, man. Um, absolutely. So Oscar asks, Justin, are you planning on expanding your pressure washing business or do you plan on branching all, off to other avenues? So I'm kind of like you guys. I like to have multiple things that I'm doing or else I get bored. And plus, I'll let y'all speak to this in a second, but I'll get to the point in my business where I really don't feel like growing anymore. Like I really feel like, you know, my time could be spent in other places and um, I'll just get jobs as I need to. And that's kind of where I'm at with my pressure washing business. I'm not really looking to expand it or anything. I'm just getting jobs as I need to. So um, can y'all talk to that a little bit, like doing multiple things and then like when you know that you've scaled it, you know, um, enough. So for me, you want, I'll go first. So yes, for yeah. me with the paint, with the painting, <clears throat> it's kind of like that. Right. So I scaled up to where we had, I had a partner and I didn't give time. We'd have anywhere from six to eight people working for us, man. And I didn't like it personally. Like I'm more of a guy I'd rather go in, you know, put my head down and get the work done myself, just get my hands dirty and just get it done. But right. as of the more I scaled up, I found I was doing less of that and more just kind of managing, which was like, which was cool too. But really it seems like, you know, okay, if I add two more employees and you know, the money should go up this much. And then if I had this many more, the money should go up and the money, but the money never seemed to like grow <laughs> the same with the expenses, you know, for me. Yeah. So <clears throat> I just, eventually I scaled back, you know, we split the business down the middle I scaled back and that's kind of where I was at too. I was like, I need to, I want to split it up. So then that's when I kind of started doing all the other things because, and I'm glad I did, man, because it's nice having a little bit coming extra and, and everything I do, everything I do for money is all waves. You know what I mean? So it's like the YouTube revenue is like a wave. And then like the reselling is a wave and then painting and construction, it's a wave, you know? So <clears throat> it's nice when the waves kind of, you know, <clears throat> compensate for each other. Right, right, right. Mark, what about you, man? Same, same type of deal. So, like, I just started Amazon last year, for instance. We'll start with that. I invested, like, um, two three $3,000 in the first couple of months. I started – and Amazon is a slow process, but you have to you, – you ramp it up because, you know, you buy – say you buy $1,000 worth of product. You don't want to buy one, one item and send it in. It's just not feasible. So you buy enough for a week. You send it all in. It takes another week to get in. Sometimes if Amazon wants to process it, it's the same day. They have their – they have you by the stronghold at that point. So it really takes a two, two to three months to start seeing any type of return on Amazon. Um, you know, if you're going big. So like now this year, my, one of my goals was, is, you know, I quit buying, I quit, I didn't send anything in after August or October last year with everything that went on, I was gone. Um, I didn't start ramping back up, but my inventory that I had in was selling in the fourth quarter. So that money was, you know, I sent in say eight grand worth of product last year and I made, I sold 27,000 last year on Amazon in six months starting. Uh, this year started off, now we're trying to ramp what, like January, I think we did uh, 6,000 just because we were starting to get back into it. Uh, February was eight, now we're, we're already over eight. We were over eight a week ago, but with everything going on, we're just at nine. Right. But the whole, I don't know, um, the whole scaling up and like Tim said, it's nice having multiple streams of income where, you know, I get paid twice a month from Amazon. Um, eBay is instantly because it's through PayPal. So anytime I hit $1,000 on eBay, I transfer. Um, you know, the vending is anytime I want money, I go out and just grab the money out of the machine. I got a couple locations that we, you know, that are right next to me that we do a couple times a week. So I always you're always going to have the cash flow coming in. Um, and that, that is a luxury of having multiple streams of income. 
but right. um yeah so but there is ups and downs you know i mean when i first started you know i paid um i saw a question actually someone asked me how i acquired all machines i did i only placed probably 32 of those machines most of those i bought i bought i, I bought routes um that were for sale um but just yeah. starting off, you know, the guy sold me the route with everything in it. You know, I had to purchase the candy, but it was kind of nice because I would go out my first time running the route and collected $5,500 in quarters, you know, so that paid for a fourth of the route, you know. So um, it was kind of nice to have that money come right back because it was able to buy product with it. So I've been, you know, I've made some stupid decisions and I've made some decent investment decisions. So, I mean, I... I bought the phone cases on online auctions that for phones that are not even, they don't even make anymore. So I made, you know, I lost on that deal. I mean, there's deals I could, I could tell you a hundred different deals and probably 20, 30% of them, they were bad decisions. Right. Damn. Mo yeah. money, more problems, right? Isn't that what they say? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Amen, brother. Amen. Hey, Mark, you, you always say we, so like your wife helps out a lot with the businesses. She's starting to get more into it now because she sees the potential for the money flow coming in. Is yeah, she just she seeing it? She hasn't seen it already, Mark? Well, no, no, because when we first started the vending, everything was going out. I ramped up from, going you know, out. you know, you when it's nice to have tw- you know, thirty-seven locations, but now you gotta buy thirty se- at least thirty-seven vending machines. Not, you know, we had about forty-five out. So And then you gotta fill the vending machines. And then you gotta dude. fill them. So our our Sam's Club credit card got maxed out many times. Go and, uh, <laughs> but but my cash back on Sam's Club this year was pretty good. So I'm not I'm not complaining. Yeah. I need to get on the Sam's Club gang for sure. Right. For sure. I wanted to answer this question real quick. Uh Domian says I've been doing pressure washing jobs for a little more than a month. Um, want to know how you get your job. So one thing people got to keep in mind whenever you first start a business, and I know that uh, Tim and Mark can both attest to this, is like it takes time to build clientele. It takes time to build uh, the business. Just like Mark said, it takes two to three months to get paid on Amazon for the first time. So, you know, just your first month, you just keep going. That's why I tell people not to quit their day jobs, you know, because you got to. Yeah. Just keep it, man. I, I honestly was still working until March of last year. I worked – I. I did government work and then I still had the Bahamas thing going. The vending stuff was still going and I was still working at a, you know, a, a salary job, uh, you know, driving three days a week, working 14 hour shifts. So, um, <laughs> so probably had some pretty good benefits though, huh? The, the uh, government job. Oh, uh, well, yeah. So <laughs> why are you coughing, dude? Why are you coughing? <laughs> You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, Tim, I shouldn't you, joke. You, I shouldn't you joke. You would actually find it. this pretty funny, but after everything we, we did that we'll get into some other time, yeah. I, you know, I, I probably caught coronavirus. We yeah, have I know. got to, we have got to plan out that, uh, that live stream because that one's going to be so good. Y'all talking about the whole story. Yeah. It was a cool, it's a cool story for sure. I, I'm down to do it whenever this be, I mean, uh, so this week's kind of busy, so any any day you guys want to do it, just as long as I know ahead of time, I can plan for it. Especially yeah, if okay. it's going to be this late, I, I'm home. I'm usually like oh, today. Fuck. I got I got home by eight fifteen. That's right. right, dude. So what time is it? So it's ten o'clock there. Yeah. About uh, 10. Yeah. Oh yeah. Eight nine forty five. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, are y'all good to go? Just for like a couple more minutes. I'm dude. I'm not going to bed anytime soon. I still got I'm a lot good. of money to count. Ah, I'm great. <laughs> oh, I just man. flexed on us like that. I no, know, Mark, bro. Mark's great, dude, man. Mark, you're great. I love you. Yeah, dude. if we're going to learn from anybody, dude, we need to be learning from Mark, man. Because I can teach you what not to do. There we go. And that's the most Did I tell you what? Lesson. You guys are like two of my best friends that I've never actually met before. How crazy is that, man? Like, I talk we, to you guys on the phone more than like. Time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I talk to you guys more than. Some of my, I don't, my I don't friends. have any friends, so <laughs> <laughs> you got Money. two friends right too, here, dude. I'm we too, all I'm, t- I'm too busy to have friends. It's hard, dude. I get it. I get well, it with all the hustles too. Sometimes I gotta I gotta like lately I've been lagging on the YouTube uploads, and it's just because like I need to like reconnect with like the real world and my family and stuff, you know what I mean? So right because it can it can take a hold of you quick. And even if it wasn't YouTube, it'd be something else. Like I used to do a lot of artwork and painting, like I got a lot of things up here. And once I get honed in, I got that ADD brain. Like it chooses what it wants to get sucked into, and like if it gets sucked in, it's hard to get come out. You know. Uh, and like YouTube, today we were up at 
I mean, you know, you get up at six thirty, seven o'clock every day, and then you're going to bed at midnight, but then you're still thinking about tomorrow stuff. So I'm up till two o'clock and it, it's just a repetitive process, you know? Yeah. Stuff. Sometimes it's good to just, I had to take a little step back the last couple of weeks. You know, was, one thing I was going to say too, is it's hard to find like-minded people, like especially on YouTube it's extremely easy, but in real life, it's a little bit different, but like, right. you know, obviously we it all is. have the same drive and ambition. So I think that's something that we can all, you know, relate, relate on. And they're all thinkers, you know, they're always constantly thinking ahead, you know, and that's important because a lot of people that I'm around, they don't really, they're not thinking ahead, you know? Yeah. So I'm I, not for sure if it's one of my biggest downfalls, but I always, th I'm always thinking about the next thing. Like it's, it's like, it's never enough. And that's my, my thing I got to come to reality here soon is, you know, like you guys are saying, you guys got to find, you know, I love traveling. I, tra I mean, I traveled in more than any, you know, 30 year old I know. Right. Uh, uh, and I, uh, and I can honestly say I enjoy it. Like, you know, and I, uh, you know, financially we're, we were able to do that. So I've been blessed with that, but, uh, you know, that that's not to go say every, nothing was given to me. I mean, I fell across some good deals, but, uh, I've also, you know, I've worked, there's a lot of 18, 20, 30, you know, 25, 24 hour days. I've worked to, to get where I'm at now. It doesn't just happen overnight. So, and right. you get you young guys these. out there, if you guys are listening, man, don't don't give up. Don't get discouraged by this thing that's going to happen. There's some bad shit that's just about to still go down in the next couple couple months, and don't get discouraged. You guys can uh, come come about it. Right. I wanted yeah, to read, we can make it happen. I wanted to read this comment because I thought it was a good one. So Gabe Torres kind of relates to what we were just talking about. Gabe said, "I'm 18 and I'm a loser who's tired of losing. How do I employ myself in a crisis like this? What do you do now?" Like before the crisis or what? Oh, I don't know. Anytime. Is he working? I don't know. He's just a loser, he says. He's a loser. <laughs> hey. That's okay. Man, I that's mean, a, hey. That's a, even losers got to win some to come out with a win sometimes, you know? Look, I've been yeah. a loser a lot of my life, but I'm I'm happy. Yeah, okay. I lose constantly. I lose <laughs> right. every day, dude. That's yeah. okay. It's a matter yeah. of uh, when you lose, you just keep, you just, you know, there start no, again. There's, there's very few people that are successful that – are successful overnight. Like everybody that's successful, any big, any billionaire you've talked to has failed at 15, I know one person. I, I know one person who doesn't seem that he's ever failed. Hi, he's man. coasting right now. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Mark. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, been blessed, man. man he he uh, hasn't. He you know what? Though? He's, being, he's, young. Truck, though. He's, he's young and he's doing smart. He's doing smart stuff with the money he's yeah. making. Yeah. So great, he's great for him. Yeah, but uh, cool. man, I tell you what, if I had an opportunity like he did at 19, right. uh, it would be a, it'd be a way different. Yeah, you'd be. We'd be no, doing uh, this no, chat no, from a from no an airplane. You'd be no in a private jet, now. like, "Hey right. guys, right, right, right. martini in my private jet." Because <laughs> you're coming from the the mindset of you at now at your age. I mean, at right, nineteen, right, right, nineteen, I had different agenda priorities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 we all know what our priorities were at nineteen. You know, yeah. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's still a priority now. <laughs> yeah, no, well, you know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> keep Donna and single, whatever. Right. Um, so, any, so for Gabe, what any advice for him? Just you know, just keep losing and figure it out. Or no, man, Gabe, dude, reach out to one of us, man. If if there's any, what do you want to do? That's you gotta. You, you can't just do stuff because it makes you money, man. The, right. You might have to do it to support your family or support you, and I get it. But there's other ways out there that you can be happy and get get by in life. You know, it's right. not so I think all. Uh, that's not a, you know, you want, do you want to work to live or live to work? That's what you got to come out to. If you enjoy going to work every day, it's not like work. So you got to find whatever you want to do or what, what you, your mindset is to, what do you want to do with your life? Yeah. It's you know, a great set, question, man. Set, set some goals and, and try to achieve them. It doesn't have to be big goals. It can say, Hey, get up, brush my teeth this morning. That's a goal. Like as stupid yeah. as that sounds, it's the minute goals that perfect you into making a great day. Right. Yeah. I would just go try to get a job and, you know, just, I mean, eventually someone's going to get you a job and then just go from there. Right. You start saving some money up and little by <laughs> and little, man. I tell anybody, I mean, Amazon is, you know, Amazon's going to be the monopoly of the, the world. If, if you know, get, kind of there's still, a there's bit. still time to get in at 18. You can still create an account. 
Um, it does cost money. It's, I mean, you're, you're going to have to have a little bit of startup money, but you know, there's, there's people in our little Facebook group page we have that started with three, four, five hundred dollars and you know, one of them sold mm-hmm. two grand, two grand last month, two grand yeah. per, on that profit. You're making nine, a thousand bucks a month. Yeah. It's not much, but just imagine if you had, you know, you take that 900, now you got 1400 to work with. Now the next month you're doing 2,500. Now you got 2,500 yeah. to work with now. And that's what you got to do. You just got to get to the point where how much money do you need to make to be comfortable? Yeah, it's it, man. That's the, that's the, that's the equation right there. That's it. Right. So you Peter says, what, what hustle can you do in this crisis? And he wants to know, are pressure washing booking still coming in? Um, so like I, I kind of alluded to earlier, I only put out money on ads whenever I need business. Otherwise I still have a bunch of jobs coming in. So my landscaping jobs have kind of slowed up a little bit. Um, but I will probably start putting out some pressure washing ads because it seems like you can still work out here in this in this climate. Any businesses or hustles that you guys can recommend during the crisis? You know, I got let, one. Let me sh- let, oh, go ahead, Tim. No, you're first. You're first. No, go go ahead, man. <laughs> so I for my, get, uh, I gotta get up for mine. I gotta take you to my secret bedroom. Go okay, so <laughs> <laughs> what do they call the champagne room? So, uh, nah, dude, right just- now. Storage I have a lot closet. of, um, so the old client that I was working with, my cousin, my mother, and uh, my daughter, they all had jobs in the education. So all these schools are closed down. So when this happened and I was telling my daughter, hey, I think you should offer some kind of tutoring, child care, like maybe watching kids and, you know, maybe run through some kind of something like that. Even maybe starting up a YouTube channel where you kind of tutor pick a subject and maybe or do some read-alongs like my cousin started that's, a, YouTube that's actually an awesome idea because these Wait, kids these parents like you just read something to them so my cousin he's doing a march madness like book bracket right so every day he reads two books and then he has all the viewers vote on which book and then he progresses like through like a tournament right so then the next day so then the you know they don't have a championship at the end it's basically like basketball bracket right but he's using books instead for his students because he's a sixth that's grade awesome. teacher and he's like, I want to stay connected with my kids through all this, you know. So that gave me the idea. And I told my daughter, I was like, why don't you try to set something up like that? Just put some ads out, like $5 an hour, $2 an hour, whatever. I'll come to your house and, like, play some educational games with your kids because that's kind of what she did for her job. You know, and I mean, why not? A babysitter slash, you know, educational experience all wrapped up into one, you know. And right. charge Pro- less than a normal baby charter would charge. babysitter would charge. Yeah, figure out a way that you can provide some value to somebody. Yeah, I I think a good hustle right now would be childcare and maybe offer some type of tutoring. I think right now is that's where it's at. Even if it's like a might even be. I mean, back in the day we had babysitters. I don't know if they still do that anymore. Uh, Yeah, you know, I get you. You're able to leave your kids at home at at nine. Back in the day, now you got thirteen or something. Yeah, at you know, at ten we were babysitting other kids. But no, right now, I mean, while parents some parents still have to go out and work and their kids are out of school by mandatory, I mean, this is a perfect opportunity to maybe take on that extra seven to ten dollar an hour. It's cash. So you gotta think seven dollars an hour cash is like making thirteen dollars an Thir- hour. Yeah, hour. exactly. So That's what that, I tell us. You same. know, anybody that tells you, I mean, you you everybody's like, Oh, he's only paying ten dollars of cash, but well, hey, ten dollars an hour cash is like making sixteen seventy five an yeah, hour. Yeah, uh, by cash the time money. they take taxes and state taxes and everything out. So don't be afraid to go work for if if someone's paying cash, I mean, hey, as long as Dude, I've worked for so dang cheap when I first started out, man. I mean, I literally, no joke, I'm not even lying. I've done jobs for free just to get my feet wet, yep. just to like do a whole job so I could say I've done a whole job by myself, you know, like just I've, get out there and I've do literally, it. I've literally had people come into my shop and I've pretty much given them items and merchandise just to gain their trust because I know eventually I know what kind of line of work they're doing. They're in remodels. They're in this where, you know, you can give them a deal. You can give them $500 for a hundred dollars. It's not costing you anything. You paid 60 bucks for it. And then the next time they come in, they're going to, you know, think, Hey, this guy took care of me last time. He's not going to be afraid. You're going to have that, those repeat customers. So, you know, even like, take us to the secret room, Mark. You want to go? Yeah, we want to go. Let's go. Let's go. So here's the backstory on this. So Amazon (laughs) shut down right now, and we do a lot of retail arbitrage when just when we're when we have the time, we're out driving, Mm -hmm. we stop past by different stores and stuff, and um, 
So you're not able to send anything in. So right now we're literally stockpiling it. So for instance, this used to be my vending room, but we kind of got that down to where I'm not having as much. Oh damn, the lights in here is bad. But all this here, I got, I got. Oh, to the got roof. Lights all the way to the roof, all the way. Star Wars action figures, mini brand <clears throat> craftsmen. What are those? So there's like boob lights and stuff like, like. Do what? Like flush mount lights and things like that. Oh yeah. Wait, uh, don't you? Got, but don't you have got, a a shop though? Didn't you say you had a shop, Mark? I do have a shop. I got an eighteen hundred square foot warehouse, but that's where I buy and sell all the uh like used or shelf pools or the damaged kind of material right. um hold on i'll show you more show us more man the secret room wasn't uh, we, got, <laughs> we got items here just stacked up we got so does your, does your wife work exclusively with you or does she, she uh, has a job as well i got vending machines out here we got vending got more craftsmen i got a gumball machine toilet paper or what is that i don't know <laughs> uh, oh, he's got the gold we, we got cases of like brand new craftsman tools let me see what else i got fedex boxes and that's a, going and, out and that's that's the stuff that you order from the pallets or or no no this is stuff we just buy like at your local stores like, so uh, for, I saw a thing that I was going to do. I think they have these boxes. They're like 300 400 300 to $400 with including shipping. And mm -hmm. I think it's called Quick Lots. And what they yeah. do is they send you a box. Instead of a pallet, you know, you get a box. And they guarantee yep. you that you'll double your money, right? Yeah, but you got to be – well, that's fine if you're going to sell it locally. But, like, a lot of times on Amazon, you're only able to sell so many items, you know? Yeah, see, Amazon's so, tricky. I haven't – for what instance, is this is the kind of deals like this is a a children's oh. toolbox, right? We oh. paid these they clearance these out for thirteen dollars and I bought a hundred and fifty of them. Uh they sell for fifty right now they're selling for fifty four dollars on Amazon. So after fees we make I think twenty seven dollars profit. Damn, so and there's awesome, deals like man. that there all the time. You don't necessarily I mean that's what I try to tell people, man. There's, I mean, not that I'm going to give away all my secrets, but <laughs> yeah. Or, or there's a, there's other item here. I, these are on sale for a dollar. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, uh, and I think with the, once you get in and you out. get that and you get the app and stuff, you just kind of go around and scan barcodes with the apps with any kind of free time you have. And like, then the app like, will kind of tell you what like, to buy. Right. We literally just got back from Nebraska yesterday. We just had backpacks with us, but we stopped by Lowe's. Right, and we found like all the my back my bag is full of all these like these we make forty four dollars on. Like, how'd you find that? Well, I mean, we've sold like a hundred of them so far. So when we went to a new Lowe's that we haven't been to, right? You know, some people don't. They have different markets have different. You know, yeah, people get that. you know not everybody can sell every brand. So that's the beauty of finding that one off item. Like you don't. You don't necessarily want to go to every Lowe's and buy the same sale item that everything's on sale at every store because all that does is creates 75 people to have access to the same sale item. What you want to do is find that one um, one item that you can blow out. So, Do you ever like – are you ever too worried about it though? Like uh, does it consume your life looking for the next best deal? Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, dude. Because I, I bet it's such like a high to get that, you know, when you find <laughs> that good deal and you know that it's gonna make money. Yeah, it's like when you find that one item. Like we, I found, you know, we found items that you buy for two dollars and you're literally making forty forty dollars on it. God, and, dude. And, 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 you, and you find it and you buy every single one in the state of Florida. And you know, some people say like, oh, you're price gouging, you're price gouging. But like, the thing is, most people are willing to pay the price, then it's not really price gouging. I mean, maybe that is a, a hot commodity locally for them, so they can't get it. So they're willing to pay the extra money, or they just have disposable income and they want it like right. that. So they'll pay the extra money so they don't have to go out. Because I was explaining to a buddy of mine, he's like, oh man, you're selling that. Like, why would somebody buy that? You're like, Happens that's price day. gouging. 
But I'm like, it's not really price gouging because if you see the profit that I'm getting, I see that you see that it's marked up like five times. But like when it's all said and done, I'm barely doubling my money. Right. Which if if you bought something for 10 bucks and sold it for 20, nobody's going to give you a hard time about that. You flipped it. You made 20 bucks. That's all I'm really doing. So like, you yeah. know, you catch a lot of flack. They're like, oh, how are you going to do that? And it's like, dude, it's like, ugh. I someone, get irritated sometimes. Someone told me just for, for instance, the baby wipes we just bought, man, they're like a locally made in the United States. They're not China made at you. Uh, they're, you know, the retail on them, the wholesale on them is $36 a box. Uh, they retail for 44. Well, we have people saying, well, I can get that at Sam's club for $12. And I'm like, well, you're comparing a Jeep to a Kia. Like there's there, you can't, I can, you know, that's like me saying I can get that house for 12,000. Yeah, I can buy that house for 12,000, but I'm going to have to put 300,000 into it, you know? Yes. Yeah. Like people, you know, people just want to complain. And now it's even worse now with like Facebook. Like you can look on some of my posts today and there's just some pa people hating out there. And what I tell them is if you can bring me a receipt of it cheaper, I'll match it. But they bunch can't. Of, bunch of haters. No. Um, Shaniqua yeah. wants to know, do you get all these products from auction or how do you get them at a discount? Uh, all my stuff. Yeah. I buy at auction, uh, for my shop. I buy at auction for Amazon arbitrage. I buy at retail stores Okay. or online. Sweet, man. Dude, or I've even, I've even done that. I mean, I've done, I've done like arbitrage on Amazon prime. So right. for instance, some of the water filters were, say we were selling for $91 for a two pack of water filters. We sell out, we sold 18 units in two days. And then somebody new that doesn't know what they're doing came and listed not prime, but they were, so they're not shown as a prime product, but they listed mm -hmm. water filters for 24 99 free shipping. Well, what do I, 24 99 is less than more than less than what I paid for them retail in a store. So I buy all 11 of his units out. They're being shipped to my house uh, probably tomorrow. And I'm going to send them back into Amazon to sell them for $91. Dude, are, see, nothing's easy. I mean, nothing. Everybody I mean, wants an easy way to make money. But no matter what you choose, there's always work, right? And yeah. the work oh, is yeah. being constantly on top of it and knowing right. the market. Like, you got to yeah, be in it. You got to be. And that's why, you know, a lot of these people say, the gurus or whatever, like, if you're going to work for yourself, you need to find something you like to do because, you're going to get burnt out if not, if you're constantly I, so like. I honestly haven't put less than 10 to 12 hours in a day. Yeah, I couldn't. Well, taking back that you know, I was with my father for like four months. Other than that, I mean, last year before that happened, I never. I no never time had off. A, no, you don't have a day. I mean, when I'm on vacation, I take time off, but you're still working. And you're, you're still, still thinking working. about, when, you know, rolling, and out on. Scheming. When, when, when I'm in New Orleans, I'm still you know, lat this couple weeks ago with all the YouTube guys that we were in New Orleans and I'm still online arbitraging, you know, I'm still buying, I'm still, you know, I'm buy so when I get home, it's ready to ship out. That's, That's cool. And I didn't see you in none of the, none of the videos or nothing. So I was like, Oh, Mark's probably at the home Depot and the Lowe's over there <laughs> scoping it out. All these people are all trying to find where to eat, you know, I, I, you know, cause they, they all got a house together and I was staying at the casino. So, um, they they were they were a little further away than downtown and you know i think a couple of them didn't have ids or whatever so it was just oh, yeah. hard for them to go out and about yeah, so yeah, i went over to yeah i mean i mean hey you know don't get me wrong but it was a good time it's just you know, I know. We i'm kind of jealous i wish i would have i wish i would have booked my flight earlier like justin said to do we could have came right. out there drove out we all could have hung out could have met everybody out. well right. the good news is, is you guys can meet up anytime eat some food yeah. Right. But, you know, and the funny thing is, I was thinking about doing FBA as just like a, a little bit of a side hustle. But the thing is, is that it's probably not. Can you do it as just a side hustle or does it kind of take over? And is it you, more of a time you commitment? Can, well, you can do it as a side hustle. You can go like you go grocery shopping or you go out to the store at least once or twice a week. Right. And just right. spend an extra half hour, scan a few items and send them in once a week. And then but well, the problem is, is you're going to say, well, damn, that was easy. I just found a. A uh, three dollar item, I can make ten on, so I'm, right. I'm three hundred percenting my money. Uh, wow! So dopamine now you start, in. huh? I said well, then I the mean, dopamine kicks in. Right, 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 right. right, right. right. Home. I'm gonna go like run a... over to the next town over real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go scan some shit, dude. I yeah. was doing that today, even every clearance yeah. rack I came across, dude. I'm like scanning everything, dude. Everything. Yeah. 
Well, and and I'll be I'll be the first one to tell you with Amazon, uh, you, you got to look past the clearance racks, man. There's tons of deals out there that are on clearance that a normal item at Walmart, say nineteen ninety nine on Amazon, mm -hmm. is selling for forty six dollars. So you make ten dollars an item that you can get at every Walmart because it's not on sale. No one's looking for it. It's like a you know it's a secret item that for some reason Amazon has it for three times the money and so do you have like a routine though like every week are you going and hitting like your number of places that you go uh well yeah yeah i mean like, a, like every week are you checking in at your walmart or your target or your oh, loads yeah. and right every, okay. sometimes every day every day go and you're yeah. just in as much shit my as local you. my local loads is a mile and a half away they uh, probably know you by name they literally clearance out every every day there could be a new clearance item or a blowout clearance like I literally bought 16, 16 lights the other day that retail for like one forty five. They're blowing them out for thirty or twenty seven dollars, and then I get a military discount on top of that, so that covers the taxes. So you know, by the time you you figure it all out, you're making eighty one dollars profit on them. Man, Mark, you're killing me, dude. This yeah. was so awesome. I'm so glad that we all got to hop in here. We, what we need to do is we're gonna schedule out a day. And we're all going to come on here again and we're going to talk about the specific instance, you know, and uh, I'll kind of, I'll kind of title that one targeted more towards FBA and we'll kind of go in deeper and, and get some questions on it. All right. Uh, yeah. Is there fun, any more man. questions from anybody else or should, I don't know if you got through them all. Um, we got the most of them. This guy wanted to know, um, storefront flips want to know, do you prep all your items for FBA? Yes. Yeah. I don't even know what that yeah, means. <laughs> Send them like somewhere in Indiana or something. You could send your items, and there's like a lady who like runs this business where she boxes everything up and sends them in or something like that. I don't know. Well, Amazon they charge a service fee for any item that's not proper. Like so, like you you some some require manufacturer barcode or you have to use Amazon barcode. We can get into this a whole nother subject, but right. yeah. uh, I I, you know, I could talk about it for hours. So I, I'd just be wasting people's time right now that aren't interested. Let's stick to the. Stick to your guys' questions real quick. And then let's, <laughs> we can do this next week. I'm down. I'm, I'm open to do whatever you guys want to do. Yeah, Dude, fun. let's do it because this is, I think we have a good dynamic here. I love it, man. You know, and plus the story is going to be incredible um, for the both of you guys. Um, last question Derek wants to know um, Did you set up an LLC before you actually got started? I'm assuming he wants to know about pressure washing. Um, I can't really give out any legal advice. A lot of people ask me about yeah. LLCs and stuff and what I did when I first started. All I can say is, is if you're going to start a business, you need to follow all of the, uh, different Sweet. precautions. Yeah. <laughs> follow, just follow yeah. the law. Um, I don't know if you're going to do some jobs for your aunts and uncles and cousins, you can do those, you know, and just see how they go and go from there. Derek, my recommendation on anything like that, if you're going to be involved in other people's properties you don't know or commercial property, right. or most definitely have yourself protected with either LLC, S Corp, and a minimal $2 million policy insurance you can get online through like Hitchcock or something like that for $35, $40 bucks a month. Covers right. yourself, covers your assets. Uh, just in case, you never know what's going to happen, man. There's stupid people it. out there. Could You know, th there's there's... Dude, anyway. pressure washing, you could those some of them old homes with those single pane windows. I mean, you could jack some break stuff. Them. You can break right. them and those are irreplaceable. You can't replace or them. Or something can happen while you're doing the or something can happen after you do the job and the homeowner can still Blame accuse you. you of doing it. Right. Right. That's it. That's a benefit of me recording my jobs is I pretty much have, you know, visual evidence yeah. of everything around the house as I'm going. So you know, if you if you need to say that, that way you can start recording your jobs, just say that you're doing it for liability reasons, you know? And um Anyway, and they make good advertising, right? Tim, Tim can attest to that. Tim, um, record dude, your jobs, dude. It's, I mean, I don't know. I never was doing this before, but yeah, I record my jobs and I just put a short video up on Facebook, and the next day I know I got leads coming in. Absolutely. Well, dude, I appreciate both y'all for uh, coming on tonight. We're gonna schedule one for next week, and we'll get into some more uh, Amazon FBA stuff. Yeah, Mark, you're the man, oh, bro. All right, all right, guys, you guys uh, take easy. Um, you know, I'm not worried about the YouTube channel stuff. I'll try to get back on to my my normal videos, but I apologize to all my my fans. No, yeah. I'm, I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> we'll but, hey, we'll below. Yeah. I'll I'll put a link in the description. We'll pump yeah. you up. We'll pump up your channel. You know, I've hit, I've hit eight thousand subscribers about ten times now. Every time I get above eight thousand, it drops below, and I 
But uh, no, hey, thanks, still, thanks for okay. everything, guys. Thanks for having me tonight. And uh, you guys all be safe out there. And uh, I'll see you next time. Absolutely. All right, love you, man. Bye-bye. Right. Peace bye, out. Bye,